Hi, my name is Stan the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent, licensed in all 50 states. I want to welcome you to the brand new, luxurious, one of a kind, we ain't playing around place, the will do, not might do studio. Look at that. I mean, we're up in the game here. That's what I'm talking about. Now, today's topic is a good one. We're going to talk about a journalist who's been, you know, I just read an article about her that she's in the top 25 of the most influential women on the planet. Jane Bryant Quinn, and she talks about finances and things like that. But recently, uh, another, uh, another journalist, I won't mention her name, and she's well known as well, she sent me a link to an article that Jane Bryant Quinn wrote and said, is this true what she said about annuities? Which leads us to this video, which is a, a little bit of a fact check on Jane Bryant Quinn, very, very smart, written a bunch of books. I'm a huge fan. You need to go to her site. Um, but we're going to have that article that I'm referring to linked right below here on the YouTube channel, on the Stand the Annuity Man YouTube channel. But we're going to go through the article. I'm going to hold up the trusty tablet, which is unique for Stand the Annuity Man, and somewhat risky because I'm not tech savvy. I've got a lot of tech savvy people around me that are very smart. But I'm going to go over a couple of things that, that uh, Ms. Quinn said, and I'm going to subtly, factually, nicely, um, and maybe with a little volume, drive the point home of the truth because she got a little fuzzy on a couple of things, but we're gonna solve that after this music. Okay, so we're back, and I'm talking about Jane Bryant Quinn's recent article that another journalist sent to me, and we're gonna fact check a couple things. Um, in the article, it's kind of an interview article, so, that, so they interviewed her, and the journalist interviewing her said, what is the sucker factor when uh, buying an immediate annuity? Sucker factor? What do you mean? You're a sucker if you buy an immediate annuity? Now, Ms. Quinn answered the, by saying, hey, it's a lifetime income stream. You know, it provides all of the benefits as long as you breathe, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what she did not do was the most important thing is to tell people and remind people and show people that when you buy an immediate annuity or deferred income annuity or QLIC, whatever lifetime income product or type for annuities, it's a transfer of risk. They're going to pay, they, the annuity company, as long as you live, as long as you're breathing. If there's a medical miracle, they're on the hook to pay. There's no ROI until you die. That's what I tell people. People say, what's the ROI on an immediate annuity? Stand the annuity man, America's annuity agent. I don't know that until you die. Tell me when you're going to die. I'll give it to you. Uh, to the penny. But what Ms. Quinn did was not drill down on the most important thing, which is we can structure the policy so that 100% of any unused money goes to your listed beneficiaries and the evil annuity company doesn't keep a penny even though they're on the hook to pay. That's the biggest misconception I get. I get calls every week, you know, from Chester. Hey, Stan, I'm thinking about a million annuity, but, you know, if I die, you know, I don't want the annuity company to keep the money, so I probably won't buy one. Well, Chester, that what you just described and what Ms. Quinn was talking about was a life-only immediate annuity. Life-only is the highest payout. Why? Because you're shouldering some of the risk, and if your Learjet hits the mountain, money goes poof. But that's only one of about 40 ways to structure it. You could do life with cash refund as an example. What does that mean? It's going to pay you for the rest of your life as long as you're breathing. If it's joint life with your spouse or partner, as long as either one of you breathing. If one of you dies, it's going to continue with the income stream uninterrupted and unchanged for your spouse or partner as long as they're breathing. But the cash refund, so life with cash refund, what does the cash refund mean? It means that when you die or when the second spouse dies, 100% of any unused money goes to the list of beneficiaries of the policy. So right there, if she just would have said that, that takes a lot of fear out of the people, the 10,000 baby boomers that are hitting age 65 every single day and won't guarantees in a pensionless world where less than 10% of companies even offer a pension. People need income, and Social Security, which is the best inflation annuity on the planet, was never supposed to be the primary source for your income stream. Okay? That needs to be put in there. That's important for baby boomers to understand that that money they worked so hard for and they're going to put it in a lifetime income annuity, like an immediate annuity, they need to know that when they die, the annuity company's not going to keep a penny of it. That's important. Now, you can do cash refund. If you want your beneficiaries to, to get the payments until the money's exhausted, you could do installment refund. 
but understand that the evil annuity company doesn't have to keep a penny. That's your decision. That's why we need to talk. Set a call, set a, a book a call with me on the homepage of theannuityman.com. 30-minute call, and we'll run customized quotes for you. And if you say, Stan, we want that money to go to someone in our family, then fantastic. We'll set it up that way. So here's the next question that the, that the uh, journalist asks Jane Bryant Quinn. To what extent are financial advisors recommending immediate annuities? She had a pretty good answer here. Um, they're starting to recommend them, but here's the reason they don't recommend them. is because immediate annuities, deferred income annuities, qualified longevity annuity contracts, those type of lifetime income stream annuities, you can't attach a fee to them. And if you do, you shouldn't as an advisor. And if some advisor is doing that to you, they shouldn't, okay? It's a transfer of risk. I mean, it's locked in, period. It's a pension. So, you know, she does say that financial advisors are recommending them more, but she says probably the reason they're not recommending them as much is because they're not... That shouldn't factor into anything. If you have 10,000 baby boomers retiring every single day or hitting that retirement age of 65 or thinking about it or actually already are retired and looking for guarantees, the fact that an advisor can't wrap it and charge a fee shouldn't mean a... That shouldn't it play into it, okay? It's a fiduciary, hello. What's fiduciary? Fiduciary is putting the client's best interest ahead of you, the agent or advisor. So if the, if the agent or, or the advisor, the master of the universe that's, mas, that, that's managing all of the stocks and bonds and mutual funds and ETFs and all that stuff, saying, well, I'm not sure about it either, because in, in back of their head, I can't wrap a fee or blah, blah, blah. That's garbage. That's what's wrong. Every single wealth architect, whatever you want to call yourself, planner, FIA, advisor, if they're not seriously looking at lifetime income annuities as part of the income floor planning, then in my opinion, they're not serious or they've never seen a bear market. You know, a lot of advisors out there, I have cowboy boots older than most of them. They've never seen things go down. Spoiler alert, things can go down. I hope they don't, hope it's a raging bull market forever, but we all know that that's probably not going to happen. So let's keep going. Okay, so here's the next one that we need to discuss because <laughs> this is serious. So why are fixed index annuities, seem, why do they seem appealing, um, et cetera, et cetera, the question. And Jane Bryant Quinn's answer was, it was okay, but it wasn't totally factual. I think she kind of glanced over it and said, okay, they're kinda, it kind of gives kind of a bond yield type return, et cetera. Let's get down and dirty about index annuities. And, and disclaimer, we sell them. We sell them as efficient and cost-effective delivery system for income riders for future income guarantees. But from an accumulation standpoint, okay, it's pretty complicated, uh, the product, period. Now, you're going to hear sales pitches of market upside with no downside. Principal, you know, principal protection with, with market to participation. All that sounds good. Okay, only half of that's true. It's the principal protection. Index annuities are fixed annuities. They're not securities. They're, they're life insurance products that are issued at the state level. Nothing wrong with that, okay? But you cannot, you know, in, in here she's talking about you're going to get a little bit better than a bond fund. Um, or they're, they're designed for that. That's a little bit of a push, the other thing that she said in here, they're very expensive. They're expensive fixed index annuities. If you don't put an, an income rider on a fixed index annuity, there's no fees, no annual fees on a fixed index annuity if you don't attach an income rider. So that's, that's not true. Now, expensive to her might mean the limitations on the upsides, the caps, the spreads, the participation rates, whatever. But you can't say they're expensive because they're not. They have no annual fees unless you attach an income rider, period, end of story. But what she should have said is index annuities were designed in 1995, put on the planet then to compete with normal CD returns, in this case, MIGA type returns. MIGAs are the annuity industry version of a CD. That's what they're put on the planet to do, period. They're transfer of risk products, nothing wrong with them from accumulation value. You know, if, if, they, if there is, is a gain, they'll lock in permanently, all that's good. And by the way, I've written a book on indexed annuities that you can go to my site at theannuityman.com and get. I'll send it to you for free and under no obligation. And I'm going to send Ms. Qu Ms. Jane Bryant Quinn one as well because people are mixing up what index annuities actually do, are, and were designed to do. 
Okay, now, do index annuities sometimes get a pretty good return one or two years out of the, but the blended return is a CD MIGA type return. I know that's not what you're hearing at the Bad Chicken Dinner Seminar, but this didn't help any when she said that. Okay, so let's do one more question. You know, if you keep going, again, it's this, um, this article is gonna be linked um, here on the Stan the Annuity Man YouTube channel if you wanna read it yourself. And I hope, Jane, you hope you're watching <laughs> because, hey, all in all, it's a pretty good article. I just need to tweak a few things factually. But here's one. With interest rates so low, Ms. Quinn, it's now actually a good time to buy an immediate annuity. <laughs> Let's do it again. Lifetime income is primarily based on your life expectancy or life expectancies at the time you take the payment. Interest rates play a secondary role. Now, common sense would tell you if interest rates were a little bit higher, like the 10-year, then the payout on an immediate annuity, deferred income annuity, qualified longevity annuity contract, any type of lifetime income type of annuity is going to be a little bit higher. That's true. That's common sense. But once again, life expectancy drives the pricing train. So on surface, and, and you know, Jane Bright Quinn answered it pretty well. Still is a good time to buy if you want the guarantees, et cetera. But that journalistic question there is the problem. People think, well, <laughs> interest rates, go, I'm going to wait on interest rates until I buy one. Really? You can't time it. You're not going to beat the annuity company. And that's not a sales pitch. That's a darn fact, OK? So if you're looking for an immediate annuity, life expectancy, life expectancy, life expectancy, life expectancy. And it makes me mad because people read this and they read Jane Bryant Quinn and they think that that is a legitimate question. It's not a legitimate question. It's a stupid question. It's an uninformed question. It's a misleading question. And it's costing people the fact that they're not making a good decision and an informed decision on annuities, period. So all in all, the Jane Bryant Quinn article is a good one. She, was, she got asked some pretty bad questions, okay? But she did a pretty good job. We just had to fact check her a little bit. But all in all, I encourage you to buy her books, go to her site, and follow her because she is looking out for the consumer, and I like that. Hey, I'm also looking out for the consumer. My name is Stan the Annuity Man. Hit the subscribe button, like button, share button, all the buttons, and I'll see you next week on the Stan the Annuity Man video.